Mike, you know we always bring you the best interesting topics and today's topic is about Kungula Maze Thresha and my main guest today is Steve, the guy sitting on my right hand side. Steve, how are you? I'm fine, how are you doing Brian? Good, welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell us about Kungula. What is Kungula? Well, um, first basically to start, Kungula is a, a word from the Luganda language which means to harvest. And uh, so basically we get this name because we were making machines that were taking care of uh, post-harvest handling in agriculture and the slogan was people should not waste when they're harvesting. So we use the name Kungula. But uh, at the moment Kungula has become the nickname or the name of the machine we made that uh, threshes maize. Uh, when I say threshes maize, it's basically the action of removing maize, maize grains from the cob. Yes, so when farmers are done with the, when they grow the maize and it is dried in the garden, they get it, they remove it from the husks, then they'll put it in this machine to remove it from the grains. This is an example. This is what the maize grains look like. I don't have a sample of uh, maize on the cob, but yes, that is Kungula. It's a machine that removes maize grains from the cob. Okay, so tell me more about the machine. So basically, um, this machine, like we said, it removes maize grains from the cob, and uh, it came out of the, the need came. Uh, when you can see in front of me, I have two samples of maize, eh? and this is what the original machines on the market used to give. Um, if you can zoom in a little bit, you'll see that uh, in this uh, cup, you have grains that have little pieces of broken uh, cobs. Do, do you mind opening it and you, you, you show us the samples? Okay. Mm -hmm. They bomb. They were boom. So no, no, no. He can use his hands, and you know. Uh, uh, basically, this is uh, what happened. This is uh, what comes from the, the. This is what people used to get from the machines on the market. Oh, has, so you'd have uh, pieces of uh, broken cobs, okay. and uh, if you can uh, see at the bottom. They're little pieces of dust in maize, what we call chaff. Mm. Yes, uh, but chaff. also these are the, just the lucky people who were able to get these machines. Um, other farmers, well, one they, they used to use their hands. Yes, I'm, I'm sure. Used to beat the maize. Yes, right so up, get sticks. Yeah. Mm. So basically, the small scale farmers will use their hands. Now, for us in our villages, would use our hands. So you get the maize itself, dried one, yeah, then and then use that. Yeah, the same maize to yeah. okay. uh, scr scrub it on the other. Yeah, hey, good number. The only now where I know out kungula maize is by putting it in my, the cob in my mouth and. So basically, people had three methods. Uh, there's that with the hand, uh, with the mouth, that one I hadn't seen it, but uh, <laughs> yes. So uh, in the villages, the person will use a knife, get one line off, then remove all the other lines using the hand. Those are the small scale farmers. And then the large scale farmers, people who had like a bigger amount of maize, would basically heap it up in sacks, get big sticks, and mm. uh, yeah. beat it. It would get broken. Yes. So basically. Oh, okay. So now this is Kungula comes up and uh, basically this is the difference in product quality. So this is rather Kungula machine has Yes. Reversed. So yes, this is supposed oh, to show wow. the difference between the machines on the market and what Yeah, so in comparison, this is the maize that uh, comes out of the Kungula machine and if you can see it is a uh, grain without broken cobs and when you look at the bottom it is less chaff. Neat. Yes. Oh. Okay, so this, uh, this, this has been harvested by the machine itself? Uh, uh, it has been harvested by the farmers and then uh, processed in the machine. Okay. Yes. So do you mind if you tell me about uh, uh, the machine, about the, the technology <coughs> on the machine? Because this looks so perfect, I yes. must say. And uh, tell me about the technologies on the machine. Yes. Um, so basically, uh, in designing this machine, we worked with farmers in Nakasongola. And uh, basically, we designed this machine, and in it, we in capacity or its efficiency, we talk about it processes about a uh, thousand kilograms or a ton of maize in an hour on one liter of fuel. Hey. Ah, okay. Yes. Um, and then, uh, which kind of an engine is that? Um, we use a, a, a Honda engine. It's a, the power wattage is about 5.5 .5 horsepower. Yes, it's basically a small engine that will so take... One liter can harvest... Uh, can, can, uh, can process can one process ton of... Uh, one thousand... Of grain. Just, just to interrupt you, mm. I, I recently read that when they say 
one horse power. It actually meant 15 horses. <laughs> so it's kind of disappointing. Oh, really? Yes. Yes, ah. yeah. yes it's uh, engines, uh, basically. The old engines were horses. Uh, you know, uh, engines were really, uh, No, horses. The horses were like uh, <laughs> the majority of yeah. the so engines that they used to run. So basically, the when the uh, oh, yes. your, uh, your cart was, uh, the strength of your cart was computed by how many horses pulled it. Mm -hmm. So even when we made oh. engines, uh, we converted that power into That's this. We get the horse, horse power. Yes. So basically, yes, this, the, the machine runs on not five horses, not five and a half horses, <laughs> but uh, okay. an engine that has the power of about that. Five horses. Oh. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Then times 50. <laughs> <laughs> about 75 horses. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you so very much. And uh, mm. tell me, why, 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 why do people uh, have to adopt Kungula? Why should people adopt Kungula? Sure. Why Kungula? So, why um, why basically, my stick? Um, <laughs> if you were a farmer, <laughs> yes, <laughs> if you were a farmer with your stick, <laughs> um, when we're talking in agriculture, we're going to look at uh, the points that we're giving you that are supposed to influence you to move from that. Mm. We're talking about, one, the efficiency of threshing. Mm? Okay. You're, you've grown your maize for three months, and now you want to take it to the market. So off the cob, how many grains do you get off? Um, so Kungula will give you a 99% threshing efficiency. What I mean is uh, in cobs that will make up a ton of grains, you're going to only lose about 10 kilograms. That's 1%. Now in other methods, it's... 10 kilograms off a ton. Off a ton. Oh. That's 1%. Oh, well, that's, yeah. Yes, so it has a 99% efficiency of threshing. And that is, okay. yes. And using a stick to hammer. Well, <laughs> using a <laughs> stick. Break, using off. a stick is unpredictable. It it's a, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. If the child doesn't get off enough, you beat the child again. <laughs> <laughs> then you get 99. Yes. <laughs> so, um, the other, the other comparison we're going to make is in uh, terms of uh, broken grains. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when people are threshing. Uh, you know, uh, when you get uh, what people are talking about, mycotoxins and uh, all that, uh, had our aflatoxins. aflatoxins and uh, what the problem we had with Kenya and taking our maize, eh? it usually comes out of fractured grains. So oh, the other okay. kind of efficiency we talk about here is uh, the amount of broken grains within the quantity that you've gotten. So in this case, our turn. What you're saying, Kenya would take more of our maize if we're using Kungula. Kungula Definitely. Oh. They would be crying for our maize. So, guys, guys, so, have it. Please endeavor to come through and purchase that machine. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Keep giving it to us. So, basically, in terms of broken grains, you're going to have less than 0.5%. Less than 5 kilograms in every ton of broken grains. Now, of course, we don't have statistics for... Uh, the beating maize in the sack. I know some sack. people who aren't broken. Who buy here broken? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, they do exist, and uh, those ones buy grain and break it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, let's talk about now that we're talking about the machine, yes. and that it is manufactured here. Yes. Let's talk about the durability and other uh, technicalities. Uh, First, the cost. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, so at the moment. Uh, the Kungula machine costs 3.6 million. Okay. Yeah, it comes fully Where's equipped. <laughs> um, I'm not so much aware about the horse, but a car will cost about 1.5 million. Okay. Yes, horses, I, I don't have horses. <laughs> so maybe if I may ask, uh, so it comes in one, uh, one range, one design, one yeah. size? Um, well, yes, so in our design process, we interacted with a lot of farmers and we d basically decided to settle on a... Uh, uh, a, a machine that can sort uh, at least the ranges of people. Oh. So we decided on uh, a thousand kilograms per so, hour. So that is the one of uh, how, how much again? It's, it's three point six million. Three point six mm -hmm. million. Yes. That is UGX, not dollars. Eh? No, yes. And then for the farmers that are don't have cash in uh, in our, uh, so they don't have like who cannot make one payment. Do you mm -hmm. have any payment plans for those farmers that are? Uh, you know, are not financially so much stable. Can they pay in deposit? Do you have any plan, any payment plan? Um, I mean, in the past, we've tried to do that, but uh, uh, as you run a business, you do learn a few things, and uh, we are not credit collectors. Mm -hmm. So right now, we work with some financial institutions, and basically, you can come to us. So we register you with, with your bank most of the yeah, time. So through the bank. Yeah, so the bank will pay for the machine, and then basically it will be like a loan from the bank. Oh, wow. 
Nice. Yeah. So let's talk. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, how how big is the machine? Not what kind of car can carry it? Um, how portable? How yes. Portable. When we were designing this machine, the major mode of transport in villages was is uh, a border border. Yes. This is a motorcycle. We oh. we all know border border. So yes. we designed the machine to be able to be uh, uh, put on a motorcycle and then transported to the garden actually that's another plus so it's very portable yes plus. okay mm. so it goes to where the maze is yes we would uh, it makes so sense so one farmer can use it oh, and after wait. ship it to the next meaning you can uh, collect uh, you, c you can have a group of farmers yes. buy the machine and then they use it take it to another guy's farm and you know use it and then take it to mm. the Yes, uh, I mean, ideally, with small, uh, small, small scale farmers, that's the mode we've been encouraging in their circles. Uh, the circle will get it, and then they will take it to Jukes' farm. After they're done with Jukes' maize, they take it to DMM's farm, they bring it to my farm, oh. like that. Oh, that's yes. quite a good one. And so that's about the maintenance, about yeah, and durability. how regular do you need to do maintenance on that machine? Well, um, it depends on uh, how your machine works. Um, usually, we'll tell you um, we Take can. It to me in cycles, like probably yeah, every after quarters. Uh, uh, let me say one thousand cycles. Okay. A cycle meaning uh, being used or something. Um, first and foremost, mm. the easiest way we say service your engine at least every season. Okay. Why? Uh, maize comes at the end of uh, a good three months of growing, so basically you have a six month period between the seasons. And what happens is if your oil has been seated in your engine for six months, it needs to be drained and then put back. Um, the cycles it needs to do, uh, unlike, unless for large scale farmers, for small scale farmers, it's, uh, you, you don't need to service within that period. Because you literally have to go about 300 liters of fuel to do the next service, which they don't usually go through in a season. No, that's, that's, that's quite a problem. That is 300 times. Yeah, sure. Yes. And Tell me the horses. Hours. How many? Yes. How many horses? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> chickens. <laughs> <are> yes. <probably. laughs> so let's talk about uh, the expertise needed to operate the machine. Uh, can a villager operate the machine? Uh, someone and, and land can uh, you know tell us how more. complicated can is key it? How, yeah. how complicated is it? Um, so in complication, uh, basically we'll take you through the operation, and uh, most of the things are about safety. Um, how to stay safe while using the machine. Um, the next is uh, care for the engine, which is the service that we just talked about. Uh, starting and everything, we have a small manual that we'll give to you, but every person who buys the machine, we take them through a simple process of starting and stopping and then maintaining the machine. Yes. Okay. So you take them through yes. this show? So, <laughs> so complicated. Uh, something like, yeah, we take you through a smaller show of not so complicated and show you how to use the machine yes it's it, it needs some small expertise but that's what we give you when we give you the machine but basically it can be operated by our, uh, you know, anyone who has gone through that small induction if i should put it my my order like today how long does it take to make one machine um at the moment it will take you two days to get your machine oh Yes. Okay, before I forget about the, the child issue, he's a child who has obesity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the safety, safety, safety gears. Uh, do I need to have anything on me for safety, or uh, say, mask? I'm guessing that is part COVID. of the induction, you see. The so I would like that. to know. Mm. Yeah, because our village people, there's a possibility I'll buy it and then I'll think I'll just operate it. Yet it could, it may need, you know, say, a mask like a corona mask. Yes, so um, basically, it depends on our uh, environment and uh, people's uh, perception to safety gear. But uh, yes, uh, the machine involves about three actions. There is carrying the maize and then putting it in the hopper where it is fed into the machine. After that, uh, there is a fan that uh, removes the chaff or the dust from the maize blows that blows it out. Okay. At the bottom, that's where the, the maize comes from after it has been cleaned where you put it. So, yes, um, when you're putting it in the hopper, it's advisable you could put on masks. Uh, sorry, sorry, gloves. <laughs> and then if someone is uh, operating below where they remove the grains from, uh, there is dust and chaff that has been cleaned from the maize coming out, and it would be advisable to put on a mask. Yes. Oh, and uh, anything for the eyes? Uh, yes, um, the, the fan that blows out yes. 
uh, the chaff. chaff and dust has some particles, uh, pieces of cobs that come out, and they could hit you. So yes, safety goggles could be a consideration. Oh, yes. Not shed, David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Stephen, thank you so much about the innovation. So how how can people access the machine? For how can they reach you? You know, to get the machine. You're welcome. Um, so basically, we, the Kungula team are under a company called Athelia Energy Designs, which is again under the Innovation Consortium. So yes, um, I'm sure the handles are there at the bottom of the show. You can reach out to the Innovation Consortium and you'll surely get a response from us. Okay, so guys, in case you want to place your orders, you know, get onto our social media handles, Innovation Consortium. Uh, you can reach out to us through our handles, even on YouTube, through the comment where, you know, you write and, you know, about what you like about the machine or the show. You can, you know, put in a comment and we can easily reach out to you. So thank you so very much. And uh, on parting shot, I'd like to get one word or two, uh, you know, about the machine from... The my, fun facts. Yeah, the fun facts, uh, you know, from my guests. Uh, start with uh, David. Yeah, I don't have a fun fact, but I had him... Talk about a hopper. <laughs> and my mind went to another hopper. <laughs> 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 hey. but, but okay. Good innovation. Thank you. Mind you, you know, it's from You're the base that they get our <laughs> <laughs> So if you can get us good maize, yeah. I mean we are certain, you know, our drink will be perfect and smooth. Okay. Okay, okay. Stephen, one last word, you know, you know, for our viewers. Oh, for me, um, I don't know, maybe, and listeners, actually. maybe I, I don't know, do the listeners know where the word Kasoli comes from? I mean, my uh, Kasoli, the name, the name for the maize. Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, no, apparently, one Muganda ate maize, and I think they died. Eh? So, it had a protection. I, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, after the burial, and someone was trying to narrate the story, and was trying to refer to that crop, that this person had eaten, mm -hmm. and they were not getting it. So he basically goes like, guys, 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 Akasori. So it gets <laughs> oh, the name. <laughs> Akasori. Yeah. Akasori. Yes. Oh, man. I'm starting to think that guy ate and said, uh, and <laughs> kungula thresh <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so very much okay. ah, for, the, for that fact. Okay. And uh, Mr. Jiko? Yeah, I'm the history bar. Mm -hmm. So I like reading about it, that the first machine that threshes grain was patented in 1734. So over 200 years, people have had machines. Was that the stick? <laughs> <laughs> the stick was patented by the dinosaurs. <laughs> Oh, Adam, whichever one you believe. <laughs> <Most Adam. laughs> but not for beating <laughs> Eve. <laughs> okay. Don't for violence. Maybe you should have beaten the snake. So, flashing has been around for that long. Yeah. So, 17? Yeah. You said 17? 17, 34. 34. Yeah. How many horsepower did it have? <laughs> <laughs> it used horses, horses, probably. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think the horse used to be beaten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Jigs. Uh, you still have more? No, that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you so very much. There you have it. Thank you so much, our viewers, for being on the show. At least today, we go to learn about this new product, Kungula. And please endeavor to check us and follow us on all our social media handles so that you can buy and purchase yourselves, you know, a machine. Uh, endeavor to like us and follow us on all our social media handles, be it LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere at Innovation Consortium. Reach out to us, let us know what you think about our show, about our innovations, about the products that we talk about. Go on to our YouTube channel at Innovation Consortium, click on that red button to like and follow us our show. Endeavor to comment, let us know what you think about our show, about our programs, about our discussions, and more so about our products. Thank you so much. I've truly been your host. Brian Lyon.